Hey, 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 it's Damon Brown, DamonBrown.net. Hey, you're watching the Bring Your Word show. Let me go ahead and bring the everybody on board, including you folks over on Amazon Live. Shout out to y'all. <clears throat> Part of my throat, the weather's changing here again in Las Vegas. So as it goes, I go, uh, particularly with, with those of you out there that have allergies. But this is uh, Damon Brown of DamonBrown.net. You're watching the Bring Your Word show. My main thing is helping you as a side hustler, so open or otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur. Um, I come to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, if you want to subscribe, you can subscribe for free over at youtube.com slash browndamon, or just click the button somewhere over here. If you've been watching the show, <laughs> I'm about to do my 250th episode. It's actually my 50th live in the past year and a half, two years. I've done live almost every week. And so it's we're, we're approaching two years. So uh, so you can kind of do the math on that. So I've been doing it live pretty much every other week, maybe a little bit more frequently than that. I still get the mirrors mixed up. That's why Twitch side has the subscription part. So feel free to subscribe. You'll see it on there. You can also use the links below as well as uh, type it in if you want. If you're on your phone, you can go and do that. Shout out to y'all over on LinkedIn um, as well as y'all over on Amazon Live. Everything I'm talking about today if there's products involved, if you're on Amazon Live, then you'll see the links. I'm not even going to try to do the sides. <laughs> It'll be on the side. <laughs> and I'll be highlighting the links links um, throughout the, the 30 minute or so broadcast. And then um, if you're watching on YouTube or on LinkedIn or even catching on Twitter or a replay, then right below me, there's a link to everything I'm talking about in here. So you don't have to take notes unless you like to, unless you're a big nerd like me, you like to take notes. No shots at you. I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> My new book is Career Remix, Get the Gig You Want Based on the Skills You've Got. Came out in January. Audiobook came out a little bit after that. Thank you all for the love and support. It's like the book that keeps going. And there's been so much fun stuff I've been able to do with the program talking about Career Remix. If you go to youtube.com slash Brown Damon, um, there's actually a playlist of all of the interesting conversations that led up to this book. So there's some live interviews with very cool people. Um, I talked to uh, Jonathan Fields. Um, I talked to um, to the uh, the author of Deep Work. Forgive me. It already feels like Friday, even though it's Wednesday. So my brain's on Friday time. <laughs> the, Cal Newport, <laughs> author of Deep Work. Actually, I mentioned him in here. Um, also in the interview in the uh, in the book, I also have interviews with Marie Folio, uh, with Adam Grant. Shout out to him. You know, so really cool stuff. This is a um, this uh, is a good book to kind of help you get to where you're going, um, particularly with the whole idea of the quiet quitting, where people are quitting their jobs if they're not leaving their jobs, and vice versa. It feels so passive aggressive to me. That's why you haven't seen any articles or videos about quiet quitting coming from me. However, though. I'd rather you take a proactive approach and you create your own destiny and say, this is the career that I want to have. The job might be theirs. They might have hired you, but the career is ours. It's yours and mine. What are you going to do with your life? That's what this book is about. I hope it helps you get to you where you want to be. And again, thank you for all the love and support with the book. Um, it's been a really, really fun time with it. Um, as far as news, a couple, couple interesting things. I'm doing YouTube shorts. So shorts are 60 seconds or less. Mine are usually less. And I'm taking the um, the gems, the nuggets, hopefully insights, hopefully the, that are that are useful to you from the, again, 250 or so Bring Your Worth episodes. I've been doing every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, taking those and then getting some of the best gems and then putting them into like 30 second snippets. Like I just posted one today. Um, about um, two things to watch out for when you create a partnership or as a founder myself, a co-founder agreement. And there's two big truths to it that people tend to forget. That's actually a classic um, Bring Your Worth episode. Classic a classic is an older, <laughs> um, about a year and a half ago that I did. The response was really strong. So I actually took that, compressed it into about 30 seconds and got the main nuggets. And of course, you can click through to the short watch a short, click through there, and then actually watch the whole video. But the feedback's been phenomenal, uh, even just from last week when I started doing them. It's already been a lot of good feedback and uh, even a lot more people coming into the community that I'm building over at youtube.com slash Brown Damon with the Bring Your Earth Show. So thank you for all the love and support. Shorts work really, really well when you're on the phone. 
I have the YouTube app on my phone, not as a creator, but just to watch YouTube. It works really well as far as the mobility of it. Shorts are built for that. You can watch them on a computer if you want, <laughs> but I wouldn't advise it. But I would say like a mobile, like a tablet or what have you. Um, it's very similar to TikTok, which you can follow me on TikTok, but I'm not as active on there. Or similar to sh some of the, um, the shorter clips, which I'm forgetting the name of them right now, that are available on Instagram. That's what's popping right now. And that's kind of the new direction that things are going in with me. I love inside baseball. I love the creativity of it and the fun of it. And my uh, Bring Your Show can be anywhere from some of the shorter ones are like five minutes to some longer, more involved ones. Like I have one talking about why I quit Facebook and why just not even from a personal standpoint, which I didn't like Facebook anyway, from a personal standpoint, from a business standpoint, I quit Facebook. I'm like, it's not, it, the ROI, the return on investment isn't there for me. That's about a 25 minute show. And that's very much on the long side. So I'm used to, and again, I do keynotes. I've spoken at TED a few times. So I'm used to having half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. So some of the shows are more involved. Some of the live shows that y'all have uh, partaken in and had your questions and comments and some of them have gone 45 minutes up to an hour. It's a great fun challenge for me because I edit my stuff myself. So as an editor, as a creator, as the host of the show and all that, to get those nuggets into like 30 seconds and it's been some fun, fun stuff that's come out of it and it's allowed me to ideally serve y'all better. And so have fun with the shorts. You go to youtube.com slash Brown Damon, do it on your phone, or if you have the YouTube app, just go to youtube.com slash Brown Damon, it'll open up in the app, and then my shorts are right there. I think it's, I think I'm about 50 shorts. So I did a handful of them last year when shorts were just starting to, starting to get onto my radar, and then they came back on the radar over the past week or two, and I was like, you know what, let me give it another shot. I've done like two dozen since then. So have some fun with it. I hope it helps you get to, again, where you want to be. Um, another thing that I, that I did recently is um, I'm trying to, with hitting the 250 show mark, and again, with this being the 50th live, there's so many conversations that we've had when you guys have done your comments, and please throw your comments down there if you have any comments or questions. With the comments coming from y'all, with the discussions that we've had, is literally like days worth of material. I mean, if you look at 250 episodes, an average episode is 15 minutes. You can do the math on that, right? 15, 20 minutes, you can do the math. So finding another way to engage with y'all with what's already happened, which I think is really important. I talk about that in uh, some of my earlier books about things being on the cutting room floor. And as creators, especially when you have like, um, I talk about that in my newsletter at joindamon.me. You can join for free over there. But my newsletter comes out every Wednesday morning. I talked about that this morning in my newsletter as far as when you're on that creative cycle. And we'll get into that in a second with one of the books I recommend. When you get into that creative cycle, it can be tough because you're so busy creating that, number one, you have a higher chance of burning out, right? Which I've had, <laughs> as, as some of my mentors have said, not burn out, but gotten a little crispy. You know what I mean? And so that's what I've taken breaks in the past. Again, I've talked about that in previous shows earlier. So be sure and catch some of the earlier live shows. Uh, you can check out the playlist for our live shows. Again, at youtube.com slash Brown Damon to learn about how I found rest earlier this year, even though it's been a very busy schedule across the board from family to, to, uh, to career stuff. But you have a higher chance of burning out. But then when you end up having a regular creative cycle and it's really intense, then you also tend to forget the stuff you've already done. And so with what I did recently, I think it premiered uh, last Friday, is I took the four TED Talks that I've done and it's audio only. So it's about 45 to 50 minutes. And it goes again from 2014, as you can see, to 2020 when I did my last talk. Shout out to TEDx Toledo, which just happened a few days ago. And having these conversations but putting them into different contexts. And if you've ever seen a TED Talk, if you've seen one of mine or somebody else's, if you go into a local TEDx, or even if you're lucky enough to go to the main TED like I have up in Vancouver or back in the day in Long Beach, California, listening to it is different than actually being there. And we're used to having the TED Talks be like videos. 
And this was different where I was actually able to strip it down and just have the audio. So you're just listening. So if you're the primary caregiver and taking care of the house like I do, you know, I, I got two little boys, you know, so it's like while you're washing the dishes, while you're taking care of them, while you're doing your commute, because now we're getting out of the house now, you can actually listen to this as opposed to watching it like a traditional TED talk. Um, so shout out to uh, TED Second Stage, which is where I did my first TED talk. Oh my gosh, 2014. Shout out to TEDx Jackson. I hope you all are doing better down there in Jackson, Mississippi, because as I talked about in the previous live a couple of weeks ago, they have some serious issues with their water. So blessings and love down to them. I hope they're able to figure things out. And I hope the, the mayor and particularly the governor steps up and does the right thing to get those people right. Um, and then shout out to TEDx Toledo, who I spoke at twice in 2018. And again, as I said, below 2020. All of its audio, all of it's right there. It's about 15 minutes. If you want to get a good vibe and you like kind of getting motivated to do some cool shit, listen to the TED Talks. And that's my intention with them. You can also, uh, from an inside baseball standpoint, again, listen to the progression as far as how I got to the point. As far as talking about non-traditional entrepreneurs. And even the beginnings of this show, you can hear the nuggets of it as the years progress. So shout out to all the TED, TED community all of them across the country and um, and outside of the country, even if we we're talking about Vancouver uh, and Whistler, Canada, which is where I did my first TED Talk. Much love to y'all and hope y'all doing well. Can't wait to see y'all in person. All right. This all leads up to this, what we're talking about. How can I be more consistent? Um, it's hard to keep showing up every time. I talk about this in the newsletter, like I mentioned. Um, if you join at joindamon.me, even though the newsletter already went out, you, with the next newsletter, you can go in and see uh, the previous newsletter, which will be the newsletter that came out this morning. So you didn't miss anything. Just go to last week's conversation. And it's about being brief. And um, it's tough to, when you make a commitment to serve a community, when you say, I'm going to release this product or service, you're making a commitment for the lifetime of that product or that service, or as long as you're going to be engaged with that community. When I did my last startup, Cuddler, which connected people for hugs, and uh, I talked more extensively about the, the, um, my journey with Cuddler, and particularly the aftermath of that. <laughs> Even though it had to be a good thing, the company got acquired, we had a lot of popularity, it was very much an aftermath personally as far as me getting my career back on track. Talk about that in Career Remix, again, the new book. Um, but we had a quarter million users. And so when our startup, our app specifically got acquired, that's the first thing that the user said. They're like, okay, who's going to acquire the, it? And are you also going to be involved? And what's going to happen to our community? So even though we only had the startup for about a year, we had, again, a lot of popularity in that year, we still had to observe that commitment. Even though we were done, the community was not. Whenever you create something, whenever you, again, do a product or a service, you're making commitment to the people that you're serving. Even if you're just trying to make a quick buck, if someone's going to give you money for it, there's going to be a certain expectation. And I'm talking like the very bottom of Maslow's hierarchy. <laughs> I, would hope, I would hope as a creator, as a founder, and so forth, you would have higher expectations. But the bare minimum, Bare minimum, if there's a financial exchange for it, people are expecting to be served. Um, I would hope that there will be a higher, again, higher up on Maslow's hierarchy as far as whatever we're trying to do in this world and the impacts uh, after we're gone, to be frank. That requires consistency. There's an expectation there. For me to, again, hit the 250th episode, I think I'm going to hit it next week. I always say that, but the numbers keep changing because it depends on how many episodes I do per week. I was traveling earlier earlier this month, so it always changes. By then, we're going to hit 250, let's just say the first week of October. To do 250 episodes in a year and a half, approaching two years in December, that requires showing up even when I don't want to. Even when I'm not feeling that good, even when my kids are screaming, you can watch some of the previous lives, particularly the early ones when, when you know, I was homeschooling my kids and I was trying to show up for y'all, hopefully doing both. OK, but it's, it's always a process. Um, but that led to 
us connecting in this way because you know I'm going to show up every Monday, every Friday, and often live on Wednesdays. You know that. If I'm not going to show up for my live, I'll let y'all know in the newsletter or I'll send a tweet or I'll send some type of messaging. But that consistency is there. Otherwise, the subscribers, the feedback, the momentum, and all the beautiful things that have come from doing this show would not be here. You have to be consistent. But how can you be consistent and also human? There's a few books that I would recommend that help with that process. Um, I've talked about that in some of the earlier episodes, particularly if you uh, catch the playlist, which I would have, if I would have thought about it, I would have put in there. I have a playlist at, again, youtube.com slash Brown Damon that's called um, uh, Smart Habits and, um, and Routines of Creatives. Keep changing the name of it, but I believe that's the name of the playlist. And it's like 15 different, um, different episodes or so that talk about how you can be consistent and be creative and still have some semblance of a life. And, you know, if you're familiar with the amount of things that I do, you got my sympathy. Where if you're trying to do, you have a day job and then you have a side hustle and all that, it's a lot. It's a lot. And you got a family at home or you have folks that, that are dependent on you and you're married or whatever, or you have a partnership or you have an active social life, whatever the case may be, you're juggling a lot of things. And being consistent is tough. And so here are some books and, um, and some videos that I would highly recommend that can help you on that part of the journey. Because again, without consistency, it's not going to help much. All right. A Practice by Seth Godin. He's actually a mentor of mine, um, made his bones in advertising and then shifted over to marketing and then shifted over to public speaking and most importantly founding companies and essentially becoming a, a coach to at this point probably millions of people through um, his akimbo workshop at a k a k i m b o i told you i got friday brain i'm done i'm already done this week a k i m b o akimbo.com go and click on there and then you can learn more about the different courses that he's taken. I've had a chance to talk with him briefly one-on-one, -on -one, virtually, unfortunately, because it was during the pandemic, and then be able to, to work with him through the, um, specifically the marketing seminar, which I would highly recommend as a very intense course to learn more about getting your brand and your idea out there as a creative. This is his latest book. His books in general are fire. Like, it's fantastic books. Super short chapters, super focused. The goal is to get you off your ass. That's the goal. The name itself tells you exactly why it's on this list. It's the practice. It's not about you're going to go out there and make a bestseller. It's not about you becoming a millionaire based on this product or service you create. It's about the practice of it. And the practice of it, hope springs eternal and often success springs eternal too. I've done 26 books. Um, Career Remix is my 26th. I'm not that old. I'm old, but I'm not that old, right? So I'm doing like a couple books a year, that kind of thing. Out of the 26 books that I've done, three are bestsellers. Like we're on the bestsellers list. Um, one or two of them I made a lot of money on well beyond what I was expecting. But if you do the math, that means there's 23 that did, eh, <laughs> Right. One of them did, you know, a few of them did, eh. And then some of them just bombed. I've talked about this, frankly, on my on my show. So I will not, I will not go any deeper in that. Just be clear. I know this thing of rejection when some when the market and the people like yourself are like, nah, we don't, Damon, we don't want that book. You thought we wanted that book. That's why you spent two years on it, but we don't want that book. And then other cases, when I show up and it's like, um, a good case is, um, I don't have the original here, but The Bites is Entrepreneur, which I self-published, started my own publishing company. It was uh, originally called The Bites is Entrepreneur, came out in 2016, became an instant bestseller. I was selling big books along with the Seth Godin's and Chris Gillen Biles, shout out to him, and Simon Sinek. I was right up there on the Amazon bestseller list. I was not expecting that. His whole point, though, is that it's the practice of it. I kept writing books, even when the, <laughs> the community said, we do not want this book. Uh, I was like, yeah, but I'm trying to serve in a certain way. Maybe I can do better. Maybe I can do differently, but I need to keep showing up. And I showed up again and I got a bestseller and, you know, I'm paying my mortgage just based on book sale. Like that's a whole different level, but you show up no matter what. 
the practice talks about how you can do that. And I could talk about the practice, you know, for the rest of the rest of the episode, but let me relax. But excellent book. Shout out to Seth. You know, I love your work. Keep doing what you're doing. And again, at Kimbo.com, if you want to go deeper with Seth and get a chance to uh, work with his team, you know, again, fantastic stuff. Um, my favorite episode uh, from the last, I guess I can say 240, 240, 250 is about 2 chains, the rapper. Of course, he wears 2 chains. Seth Godin and the Minimal Viable Audience. Minimal Viable Audience is the minimal amount of people that you can serve that can help you elevate how you serve everyone else. There's a thing called Minimal Viable Product, very popular in Silicon Valley. It's by um, Eric Reese. I always forget his name. Eric Reese, who came up with the idea of the lean startup. And it was uh, coined by other people as well, but he's the one that really made it famous. Again, back in Silicon Valley, around the time that I lived there, about 15, 10, 15 years ago. Um, and there's something called a minimal viable product where you do the most basic bare bones, proof of concept, give it to the people that you think are going to love it, and then they give you feedback, and then you make it better. This is the equivalent of that. Minimal viable audience is saying, I'm going to launch a show called Bring Your Worth, and I'm going to send it to the people who I think really need to hear this message or who will get the most out of it. And then based on their feedback, they will share it ideally with other people. And then we grow from there. The practice. It's not about immediately hitting everyone at the same time. It's not about hitting a home run out the gate. Because then after you hit home run, what do you do after that? Do you know how to bunt the ball? Do you know how to deal with a strike? Do you know how to, to, to run to the base, you know, and do a steal? I'm not a big baseball guy, but I know you need to understand all those things. You can't expect a home run every time. But what you can do is practice your swing and practice your run. What do you have control over? Build on that. This video gets into that. It's one of my favorite uh, episodes. I think it was probably from about a year ago. So another kind of semi-classic episodes. But please check it out if you're kind of struggling with that. Uh, the next book I'd recommend is Natalie Nixon, uh, The Creativity Leap. Shout out to Natalie. Hope you're doing well. Representing Philly. So I represent Atlantic City. So much love to you over there. Creativity Leap um, became one of my favorite surprise books. I forgot how I heard about it. Um, it might have been from a mentor. Um, it might have been from a family member. Um, it might even be from my partner, from my wife. Somehow the book got in my hands and I was like, this book is amazing. It's a short little book too. It looks thick, but it's, it's actually really short. You can probably read it in the afternoon. What I love about Natalie's work and um, she comes from the fashion industry. She also comes from a lot of creative as well as dance. She comes from a lot of creative professions and understands the juggling between the business and the creativity, hence the creativity leap. She breaks everything down into two pieces, which I absolutely adore. There's the wonder and there's the rigor. The wonder is, you know, when you wake up in the middle of the night, maybe it's just me, <laughs> you wake up in the middle of the night or you're up late um, or you wake up first thing in the morning, kind of that, uh, what they call it, twilight, or you're in the shower, whatever, that kind of um, liminal space. And suddenly an idea hits you, you're like, oh my God, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to release this product. I have to create this service. I have to do it this way, that way. I got it. And then you get out of the shower, you wake up, whatever, you get one of my <laughs> one of my notepads, which I'm always, always talking about. I've literally done a TED talk about uh not notepads, index cards. I've literally done a TED talk about index cards. You can catch it on youtube.com slash Brown Damon for free. Um, but you grab one of those and you write everything down, and it's a step beyond brainstorming, you're inspired. And it's like, or you might do it with someone else. And you're like, what if this, what if that, what if that? And you're just exploring. Then there's the rigor. The rigor is, all right, I'm going to start a, um, a YouTube show, which I've never done before. All right, so I guess I need lights and I need a mic. You can't see our mic, but, and I need a phone so I can edit the stuff and I need to use special software, shout out to StreamYard you know, the StreamYard.com software to do this. And, oh, I guess I need a stool and 
I guess I should get my bookshelf in or order. And you know, shout out to the wonderful gentlemen behind me, which are part of the decor that wasn't here. You know, set up like this before the show. And then, who am I going to talk to? And am I going to go there every? Am I going to talk to y'all every day? Which, as I talked about in previous episodes, I was doing. I realized I was going to burn out eventually. Good call. I'm like, or am I going to talk once a week? No, I want to connect with y'all more than once a week. That's the rigor. The wonder is, <laughs> sorry, my hand suddenly didn't know where to go. The wonder is, I have this big idea. Where can this go? The rigor is, how can I get there? What are the details? What are the brass tacks? What are the directions? Let me pull out my map <laughs> online or whatever and figure out how the heck I'm going to get there. Is it even realistic to get there? That's what she gets into. She talks about the process. It's fantastic. Because essentially, to be consistent, I've found, and I've talked about that in um, my previous book, again, The Ultimate Bites as Entrepreneur. This is a compilation of the bite-sized books. And the second one I did is called um, The Productive Bites as Entrepreneur. But it's all in this one. And I talk about the cycle. And then at the same time, she came out with her book, and she talked about that cycle. It's a cycle of I'm getting inspired. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go ahead and go for it. And how am I going to do this? Let me put in the work, the grind. And if you only do one of them, if you're just thinking about the ways that things might not work, then you're not going to really change or make an impact on the world because you'll just be looking at what's not going to work, right? If you just look at the wonder, you're not going to get anything done because your stuff isn't practical at all. We are juggling between these two complementary parts. I wouldn't call them opposites. I do it every single day. If you're a creative, if you're a founder, if you're making cool shit, you're going to be bouncing back and forth because you need the inspiration, the wonder, but you also need the practicality. Toggling between those two or finding a balance between, that's how you stay consistent, right? This falls into what I hinted at earlier, why daily routines work for creatives, writers, and entrepreneurs. You got to have a regular system in place. I do my best. I've fallen off recently. I'm not afraid to, to um, or not too shy to, uh, to explain that. But uh, doing the, a daily meditation, uh, the weather's been weird here, but I usually do a daily walk. Um, those things have become part of practice. And it's not only the balance of yourself, but also the balance of your creativity. For instance, I've had already had a super busy first half of the week, like putting in hours, which is probably why my brain's starting to shut off now. I know after I, I hang up with y'all, I'm going to take a nap. That's the plan. If you know my work, you know I'm a big proponent of naps. I'm going to have a snack. <laughs> I'm going to take a quick nap because I need one. That's part of that balance. You can't always be on. And being consistent means knowing when to step away. Being consistent means knowing when to step away. And that's part of the discussion. The last one is different. I was thinking about this topic today. I had not thought about this book in several years, but it is. It's Dojo Wisdom by Jennifer Lawler. Shout out to Jennifer. I love your work. Um, this version I have is called Dojo Wisdom for Writers, because obviously my background is writing. <laughs> so that's why I got into it. But she has a fantastic version for everyone called Dojo Wisdom. But I only have this copy in, in physical form. I want to make sure y'all saw it. This is a fantastic book. I want to say it is 100. So it's 100 different short chapters that give you the insight or the discipline you need to consistently show up day after day after day. If you think about um, you know, um, martial arts and if you think about how people have to show up in a certain way and there's back to the rigor. A certain rigor. My schedule with the Bring Your Worst show, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, Vegas time. If you watch any of my episodes beyond, say, episode 10 or, you know, when I was just getting started, beyond that, you will see me starting with the same exact intro. That is setting everything up for you because then you know what you're going to get. It's a comfort level and setting things up for me where I'm already getting to the mindset of making sure that I'm serving you as much as possible in the way that you ex expect. She gets into that. I love it. Fantastic book. It's a classic. She actually has an upcoming book and several books, actually. If you go to JenniferLawler.com, 
I get it spelled right there. So jenniferlawler.com. She actually has an independent uh, publishing press, independent, independent publishing company, I should say, not a press, independent publishing company, just like myself, like I have Bring Your Worth. She has her public, publishing company and she has some really cool stuff for creatives, for writers, and then the classic stuff like Dojo Wisdom is for everybody. So please check it out. Again, shout out to, to you, uh, Jennifer. I hope you're doing great. And then Think Non Hans, best quote for right now. This is a fantastic Tibetan monk. Um, I think he lived to be, I want to say early 90s, early to mid 90s. He was part of the exile that happened with, with the uh, Tibetans, with all the controversy that happened, that same era of what was happening with the Dalai Lama. In fact, they connected. And Thin Nan Han was actually one of the people that inspired Martin Luther King. Like, not, no joke. MLK went over there. <laughs> I forgot where uh, Thin Nan Han was living, but went over there and met with him as he was trying to do the peace accords and the civil rights back in the 60s. You can look it up. Fantastic, fantastic man. He passed away a few months ago. Um, I have one of his books, um, No Mud, No Lotus. Actually, my partner got the book. I took it from her. <laughs> I love the book. I read it like five times. I think I finally got my own copy. It's somewhere up here. But it was a fantastic book, and it got me through some really dark times a few years ago. Um, so bless him and on his journey. I think he passed back in February. But when he passed, I ended up talking about my absolute favorite quote from him, and it ties into exactly what Jennifer talks about in Dojo Wisdom. So I can gush about him all day. You know, I wish I would have met him in person, but he influenced me in such a way I feel like that I did. So be sure and check out the video. Again, I can gush all day. <laughs> so that's how you can show up and be consistent. Again, my new book is Career Remix. Uh, get the gig you want based on the skills you've got. So I got like a pile of books over here. <laughs> so I am so unorganized today. <laughs> and the books from the top that will help you become more consistent are uh, Seth Godin's The Practice. Ah, The Creativity Leap by Natalie Nixon. Again, shout out to Philly. And lastly, and most importantly, I shouldn't say most importantly, but definitely not least, Dojo Wisdom by Jennifer Lawler. Shout out to you. Fantastic book. Again, I have a version for writers. She actually has a version for parents slash mothers as well, but there's also a, a version for everybody. That's the link that you see below as well as the link that you see over on uh, Amazon Live. Anyway, that's it for this week. Much love to y'all. And remember that you can always bring your worth and you can always build from now. Oh, and we come to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And you can subscribe there. All right, have a wonderful week. Look forward to seeing you next Wednesday.